Well, we turn our attention now to the big battle over budget and spending. We're pleased to be joined by Congressman Sander Levin, a Democrat of Michigan who's the ranking member of the House Ways and Means Committee. And, and Congressman, I, I want to start with uh, the news that just came out today out of Wall Street. The Standard & Poor's has downgraded the outlook for uh, U.S. Treasury uh, and there's basically a pessimistic view. What, is, what does this say to you and what is, what is the message that Congress has to take away out of the fact that we're being downgraded on our debt? I think it's very clear. Don't play games with the debt ceiling. We have to act. We can't tie it to anything because if our credit goes bad, it has catastrophic implications. Look what happened to the stock market already. And if we continue to, to try to tread and try to combine it with other things, we're really playing with fire. Don't do it. That's my message to the Republicans. And the uh, the S and P report, though, also made it sound as if it was it was more than just the debt ceiling. It was also this idea that the Ryan budget and the president's budget were so far apart that maybe Congress wasn't going to be able to pass a 2012 budget, and we'd be back where we were, like with the continuing resolutions. How worried should the American public be that you guys aren't going to be able to agree on a budget again? It's going to be difficult because the president laid out very clearly we have a deep difference. I think the Ryan budget is irresponsible. It tries to turn back the clock on 50, 60 years of what made middle-income America in terms of health care, in terms of pensions. And I think there's a deep divide. The president made it clear, do we have one America or many Americas? They want to, they say they're going to save Medicare. They should be honest. They want to do away with it. With Medicaid, which provides so much of the help for, for long-term care. They want to cut it over $700 billion and ship that back to the states. So they're really trying to reverse what built this country. There's a deep divide here. I hope we can bridge it. But I think they should be honest about what they're saying and Medicare, not save it. Like they were saying, save Social Security when they wanted to privatize it. They were ending it. So we need to start with an honesty about what they're proposing. On that point, President Obama said similar things last week, outlined his what he said was the Republican vision for America. If this is the way we're characterizing things in this debate, how do we get anything done? I think both sides have said we need an adult conversation, but when you get into the particulars, you, you hear some just such heated rhetoric. Is there any chance that you can you, you have to dial that back a little bit in order to maybe get compromise? I don't think it's heated rhetoric. I think it's honest rhetoric. I think when they say they want to save Medicare when they want to repeal it. And we say, no, you're trying to repeal it and not save it. I don't think that's hyperbole. I think that's honest. They want to say to seniors who are now 55, in the end, you're going to get a voucher. And that will cost you 6000 bucks a year to start with in added health care costs. The only way we're going to bridge these differences is by having honesty in how we characterize what we stand for. And then let's try to come together. The president has said $4 trillion in deficit cuts. I think we need to cut the deficit, but we should not do so by cutting the heart out of what has made America a strong, unified place, building a, a middle class. I come from Michigan. I saw the middle class being built these last 50 years, and I don't want to turn the clock back on it. That's not heating up rhetoric. That's honesty about what's at stake here. Congressman, I want to just switch gears for a second. Michigan obviously is, is losing a congressional seat. There's a lot of talk in redistricting that you may get paired up with one of your Democratic colleagues. How concerned are you about this? And are, are you committed to run regardless of how the lines are drawn? I want to run again, but we have on the agenda much more important things right now, and you've been mentioning them. We have to get hold of the deficit, but do so in a way that doesn't, as I said, cut the heart out of what has built. I come from Michigan again, and I saw what happened these last 50 years in terms of health care, in terms of people owning a house, in terms of education. For example, the Ryan budget would cut education support by 25 percent. In Macomb County, that I rep represent much of it, 10,000 kids at the community college have Pell Grants, and what they want to do is to cut a thousand bucks out of it. That's okay if you're in the wealthiest. You know, we, we need to focus on this. 
The wealthiest in this country, the top 1%, have 25% of the income and 40% of the wealth, and the president wants to continue the tax cuts for the wealthiest, which only increases the deficit. So let's talk facts, talk straight to each other as we sit down and work this out. Okay, talking straight then, taxes. You mentioned wanting to have them expire for more than 250,000 uh, income earners. Is that it? Is that enough in your view, or do we need to be looking even further at revenue enhancements? No, I think we need tax reform. I think we need to start by not continuing the tax cut for very wealthy people. We need to look at tax reform, but to do so in a way that gets away from the lingo and says what's at stake. For example, the proposal is to cut the tax rate down to 24, 25 percent. It would probably mean we would have to eliminate the mortgage deduction, probably have to eliminate the deduction and exclusion for health care, the built employer-based health care system in this country. Look, I, I have seen it happen in Michigan, and it's true throughout this country. People 40, 50 years ago did not have a pension in most cases, did not have health care, and their kids did not go to college. We've reversed that and helped to build up the middle income, uh, the middle class of this country. Right. And we need to continue that. That's a top priority, and the, the Rhine budget essentially turns the clock backwards and rips the hands off the clock. We can't do that. All right, uh, we have just one more question we could get to, but talking about the other issue, Medicare, both sides, though, agree, it seems that even the president agrees, something has to be done about this. Are you taking everything off the table, or do you think you can agree that there are some things that may, might have to be done, whether it's means testing or something like that? No, we're not, we're not taking everything off the table. Look, with Medicare, we need to reform it. If you eliminate Medicare, you... you obviate the possibilities of reforming it, of changing how reimbursement occurs. That's another reason to continue Medicare, because that way we can get costs under control. When the Republicans just say, turn it to a voucher system, that doesn't help cost containment. No, that has to be on the table. Right. We want to put things on the table, but not in ways that essentially cut the table out from under the middle class and low income groups in this country. That right, isn't what we want. That isn't what we need. Congressman Sander Levin, Democrat of Michigan, former high school basketball star that you are. We appreciate you being with us today. Thanks so much. I don't know about a star, but I was glad, <laughs> glad to be with you. All right. Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you.